Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the NPT Explained. My name is Lily. I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and I'm also a professor at the University of Texas at El Paso. And if you know me, if you've seen me before, I am the Brain PT. So the Brain PT, if you don't know, it's a social media uh, resource that uh, contains a bunch of videos in topics of neurologic physical therapy. So today we're going to be reviewing questions of the typical PT platform. Um, and if you're preparing for the NPTE exam or just curious about what, um, what makes these questions up, um, you're in the right place. So today we're diving deep into the questions, breaking them down, analyzing them, and just giving you tips on how to tackle them like a pro. So grab your notes, get comfy, and let's get started. Now, full disclosure, you know, I feel like I'm a student. I'm always learning. So if I get a question wrong, well, you know, it's a learning experience for both of us. Um, but grab your notes, get comfy, and get your favorite drink. So today I'm drinking a coffee <laughs> with just creamer and a little bit of sugar. Um, and let's dive in. So the first question is um, a neuro question. This is the topic of differential diagnosis. So this is in the uh, platform Typical PT. Now, this is a platform where you can create your own practice test, practice quizzes, and you can customize your whatever you want. So here I've customized my quiz for me um, in neurodifferential diagnosis. So let's read the question. So, a 65-year-old patient is admitted to a healthcare facility with sudden onset weakness on one side of the body, difficulty speaking, and a loss of coordination. The patient has a medical history that includes hypertension, diabetes, and a previous TIA, so trans, uh, transient ischemic at attack. On examination, the patient exhibits slurred speech, facial drooping, and weakness of the left arm and leg. What is the most likely cause of the patient's current presentation? So here we are already thinking something like stroke, right? And if if we read the answers, which if you're on the go, I'll, I'll be reading them, but if you are actually looking at the screen, you'll see that all the answers are stroke. So now our job is to find out what's the best answer, right? Remember that with these questions, most questions are going to seem like they're the correct answer. You just have to really know which one is the best answer. So let's do answer A, cerebral embolism, B, hemorrhagic stroke, C, recurrent transient ischemic attack or TIA, and D, ischemic stroke. So the first one that I would cross out is hemorrhagic stroke. Why? Because this patient had a um, TIA in the past, <clears throat> So that tells me that this patient probably has some issues with like the circulation is not flowing as it should, therefore going through those um, ischemic attacks. So here is the keyword, right? It's transient ischemic attack. So you can cross out B. Now C, um, recurrent TIA, I would say that's not the answer because the the transient ischemic attacks um, in the question it would say something like temporary slurred speech or facial drooping that went away in the next 24 hours so it doesn't tell me anything like that so tia it's not the one that i would pick now we're left with a or d now these are tricky even for me uh, because the cerebral embolism <clears throat> you know, might be the cause for a, a ischemic stroke, right? So um, right here, if I go back to the question, right? On examination, the patient exhibits slurred speech, facial drooping and weakness, and they had a history of a TIA. And this patient is admitted with a sudden onset weakness on one side of the body. So seems like this patient is actually having a stroke. So my answer in here will be B, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's A. So let's take a look. 
Okay, so we're right. The answer choice is D, ischemic stroke. This is because, again, the patient presentation of the sudden onset weakness slurred speech. Now let's take a look at A, the other, the other option that I was kind of exploring. So, okay, it in, it's incorrect as it involves traveling bits of matter causing occlusion in cerebral arteries, which do not match the patient history and presentation. Okay, so so again, here you can see, and again, if you're not in front of the screen, I can I can tell you what's going on here. It tells you why this is the right answer and why the other ones are not the um, correct answer. So as we said, B, <clears throat> it's, it's not hemorrhagic stroke because hemorrhagic strokes it's abnormal bleeding. It's a burst in an artery um, and it's just not aligning with the patient's symptoms. Remember with hemorrhagic stroke, you will see the thunderclap headache, depending on where it is, right? Like subarachnoid hemorrhage, you will see the headache. You would see um, maybe knuckle rigidity. You will see like sudden onset of weakness, etc. But you will see that really a strong headache, um, especially if it's subarachnoid hemorrhage, which tells you hemorrhagic. Um, it's that thunderclap headache. Um, and then C, again, TIA, it's similar, but they're temporary where they're a transient. They're, they're quick and they go away. So that's why that was not the right answer. So I could see um, why the cerebral embolism, it's not the, the correct one because this is actually like the clot, but the patient's symptoms are originally from the stroke. So let's look at the next one. Okay, so which of the following conditions will not be labeled as a central neuropathic pain pathology? So here, if we read the question, central, central, it's the key word. Right? So central neuropathic pain. Let's look at the answers. A, Guillain-Barre, B, multiple sclerosis, C, traumatic brain injury, and D, Parkinson's disease. So, okay, which of this, GBS, MS, TBI, or Parkinson's, which of these conditions are not central? Well, if you take a moment, it's actually Guillain-Barre, right? That's a lower motor neuron. So MS is central and that can cause central pain. TBI, central disease, and Parkinson's disease is also central condition. So my guess would be a Guillain-Barre syndrome. Let's take a look. Okay, we got it right. So answer choice A, that's the correct. This is a, it's not not labeled as a central neuropathic pain pathology because this G, uh, GBS affects the peripheral nervous system, not the central nervous system. So this is the reason. MS affects the central nervous system. TBI affects the central nervous system and Parkinson's disease is uh, can cause central nervous or central neuropathic pain because it's a central nervous system um, disorder. And last one, let's take a look here. Oh, okay, this one is a, a little bit more um, difficult with nerve roots. So let's take a look. Patient reports frequent episodes of tingling on the medial aspect of the calf and ankle. So calf, ankle, especially during thoracic extension. Upon evaluation, a hyporeflexive patellar tendon and weakness in the tibialis anterior and extensor hallucis muscle are noted, along with limited straight leg raise and a negative prone knee bend. Which level of disc herniation is most likely to cause these symptoms? All right, so this is a challenge for me because it it has a little bit of ortho, okay? So again, no judgment if I get it wrong. <laughs> let's take a look. So let's break the question down. The patient reports tingling on the medial aspect of the calf and ankle. Okay, so they're here where if we picture the dermatomes and if you start you know, remembering those dermatomes, calf and ankle, so, you know, lower lumbar, 
right? Um, upon evaluation, a hypoflexive patellar tendon and weakness in the tibialis anterior and extensor hallucis muscles are noted. So dorsiflexor weakness and toe, great toe extensor weakness and that limited straight leg raise and negative prone knee bend. Okay, this herniation. Whew. All right, so <laughs> let's take a look. So the answer choices are A, L2, L3, B, L3, L4, C, L4, L5, and D, L5, S1. Okay, so my, my approach to this question would be tingling calf ankle, so lower, lower lumbar. And then we have a hypoflexive patellar tendon. Okay. And then weakness in the lower lumbar. So I am, ooh, okay. I am going to go with, let's take a look. What do we think? L4, L5. Because L4, L5, L4 dermatome covers a little bit of that tibialis and it also covers a little bit of <clears throat> of the ankle but S1 goes also down in the ankle and then L5 it's lateral so let's say medial aspect okay that's the key medial aspect so then it has to be L4 L5 because L4 dermatome it's it's in the medial aspect of the leg oh, okay let's let's take a look let's take a look so here my approach to this question would be to review um your dermatomes um and where do they go so i'm gonna go with l4 l5 because l4 also covers a little bit of patellar tendon all right let's take a look at what it is okay so we got the answer correct ah oh, okay this was a little bit challenging because the dermatomes and, and a little bit of ortho. So correct answer. Option C, L4, L5. Let's take a look at the explanation. Symptoms of tingling on the medial aspect of the calf and ankle, along with a hyporeflexive patellar tendon, weakened tibialis anterior and extensor hallucis longus, along with the limited straight leg raise and negative prone knee bend. Okay, so um l2 l3 it's too up high it's up high in the thigh so this really doesn't color uh, correlate with the complaints of this patient of tingling on the medial aspect of the calf and knee uh, i'm sorry calf and ankle so we cannot say okay l2 because again if you pull out your dermatome uh, chart you will see l2 l3 pretty high on the thigh so scratch that out l3 l4 okay it could be but it doesn't really tell us l3 is on again is still up in the in the thigh and again also with this question you need to look at your myotomes right so so here i would recommend if you struggle with this question like me right so you really need to know where your dermatomes are and you really need to know the myotomes and perhaps the 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 DTRs and which myotomes are they hitting? So, and then let's go over option D, which is L5 S1. Now S1 also goes around the leg, so on the back posterior aspect. Now we did say something about the prone knee bend test, um, but here the 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 um, L5, so if we look at L5 dermatome, it's in the lateral aspect of the leg. So this patient is complaining of tingling on the medial aspect of the calf and ankle. So again, going back to those things, you will be able to answer this question successfully. All right, everyone. I really hope that was helpful for you. And if you like this videos, give them a thumbs up Put in the comments what you like to see in the future if this type of explanations or you know going over the question is helpful so thank you so much for listening to this episode of the NPTE explained and check out um our so thank
Thank you so much for listening to another episode of NPTE Explained and check out um, the description for any additional resources. Bye for now.